What happened here? Yesterday. I was driving. He came back in the tow truck with engine knocking. Engine was knocking like crazy. Start the car. Let me hear the noise. Okay. Bye. Come over here. What side coming from this side? All right, shut off. Shut off. Shut off. Ooh. Yeah, it's all good. So, it's a Lexus. Lexus right here. So, hooked up that scanner. Let's see, he's got also check engine on. So, we're gonna see what we can do. Because used cars, price is up, so we're gonna try fix this engine ourselves. And uh, I guess we're gonna try. We're gonna Google it, we're gonna take stuff apart. We're gonna see if we can do it ourselves. Let's go over there, let's see uh, what kind of... Show me that scanner, what kind of scanner. He's got a scanner right there. He's getting cylinder one misfire detected. Cylinder one misfire de detected. So if you come here, so it's the cylinder. It's uh, bank one, bank two, I believe. Cylinder one should be right here. So it knocks coming from this side. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Even numbers here, add numbers right here. Another thing you can do, when he starts the car, you can get this thing and you can just feel it and it's gonna kind of tells you in the sound start it up again which side is coming all right shut off so this tool tells me looks like it's not number one it looks like it's like number two unless it's something between but the sound like coming from from this side more more wilder so what we're gonna do we're gonna probably leave uh in taking place because that's lean on uh bank two side we're gonna start taking slowly apart and remove that uh valve cover right here and then we can see all the pushers springs and we're gonna see maybe spring broke and it bounces around and when piston comes back up it hits the valve and it makes that sound all the time so hopefully uh, piston and cylinder doesn't have shavings and, and scratches another thing you can do check the oil and, and if you look in the oil oil has no no shavings so he's taking your car right now he better easy on the gas see See, he, he taking your car. So now he's gonna come back with engine knocking on his car, on, on your car. See, this is it. So, so part one, we just did little inspection and we know the noise coming from bank one and also our two confirms it's coming from this side. So what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna take, start taking plastic covers. Battery is gonna come off first probably or covers first or battery this intake mickey mouse for uh, people who likes the noise and and racing stuff he's oh. got this upgraded uh intake filter so that's gonna come out and slowly just take part everything by part, part and we're gonna start removing stuff until we get to the uh, uh, valve cover and remove everything then we can see it inside so stand by for uh, video number two right after that another thing you can do you can do compression check you can pull that uh, spark plugs out and you can crank it and also it's going to confirm if the valve is broken or spring is broken and valve staying open causing this noise you're going to know the cylinder was compression so by the compression test you can also determine which cylinder is shut so hopefully we can we can fix ourselves otherwise from three to four maybe five thousand dollars to replace the engine 
or go buy a new car with low miles, prices up like 20 grand, it's not worth it. Because so, this was a used car when we bought it. right now, nowadays. Yeah. So go from there. All right, you can stop filming. So he was driving on Lakeshore Drive, which is a small highway. How fast you were going? Like 50 miles an hour. 50 miles an hour, and then what happened? Check engine lights started flashing, and then I gave it the gas to the floor, and no power at all. So was the power check engine flashing? That means that cylinder already quit, so was compression completely. So he was driving on five cylinders, and I threw it into limp mode. And then after all, he came back in a tow truck. Okay, you can kick off. I'm gonna start taking stuff apart. Okay. First, Alex, we're gonna do. We're gonna use this little tool. We're gonna pop all the rivets. So that, that should be straightforward. Basically any car you got all this plastic stuff and you know. So today is a nice day warm. So plastic doesn't like to be in the cold weather because it gets brittle. So you're gonna remove one by one. Looks like one of them is using a screw. Then then after that oh, okay. we're gonna remove uh yeah they got two screws. We're gonna also remove our battery there. get out of the way and then after we remove the battery we get more room we're gonna start taking a uh, intake and the good thing you can always have you can do this connecting all your parts so that way you can drill real nice so we're gonna play car mechanic today get a fill up and, and probably for another couple of weeks I'm gonna be a mechanical adventure here okay see he's got this guy over he's here he's got another guy right here I actually we can leave this one in place why the stuff you take it's it's better because you don't really need taking extra stuff so next thing we're gonna do we're gonna remove battery, which is looks like uh, eight or, or 10, 10 millimeters. Stay, stay right here, let me get the wrench. Just stay for a second here. I'm gonna take uh, this one here. I'm gonna take eight or nine or 10, and then I'm gonna remove this battery. That's actually 10 millimeter. That was it. That's nine. Nine is not gonna fit. Hey, where'd you go? Hello? Right here, I got it. So, so real quick, we're gonna remove the battery out of the way. Both terminals. Usually you can start on a minus side to drop it off because on a positive, if you touch something, boo, it would blow like crazy probably 300 amps short maybe even more it would completely screw up surface whatever so push connectors out of the way negative out of the way positive okay this guy now you see the little mounting screw right here that's what actually all the battery so if somebody wants to know oh i got a bad battery how can i do that just like that you go buy a new battery you take that stuff out the way i did negative positive start with negative so we don't show the positive the reason why we're gonna remove this because we're gonna get clear access to that side of the valve, valve covers. So we might have to inch, change entire head, including head gasket. Maybe get a rebuilt head with valves, with everything, and bank one. Because if it's got heavy damage there, there's no no reason to uh, even try to fix it. We're just gonna get new head, head gasket, torque everything to the specs, and the car is gonna be like new. 
if cylinders is not damaged. We're gonna, once you pull the head gasket, you'll be able to see those three cylinders. I did head gasket job a long time ago, about 20 years ago, an older car, middle of the winter. And that was, that was pain in the butt. But I got it fixed. It was an older car, not this car. So, uh, similar stuff, you know, the only difference is gonna be this one's got more stuff on the way. So, keep your stuff. So now I'm gonna see if I can just remove this out of the way. Of course it's something holding there. Yep, it's got another clip on the harness, which is they made it, so it connects to this case, you know. It's not smart to do like this, you know, because they made it my job more harder to remove this stuff, you know. So, what I'm gonna do is, let me see if I can disconnect this little plastic clip, which one holds uh, which one holds this thing. But, I guess not, that's why I don't like to work on the cars, because everything this becomes pain in the ass. Yep, it's got a clip on it, so, I'm gonna figure out how to disconnect this thing. You can stop, stop recording.